I'm Lynn Manuel Miranda, and you're listening to Hard Knock Life. David, thank you so much uh, for taking some time out of your day uh, and talking to me. Um, I'm, I, like I, I told you before on Twitter, I'm, I'm the gaming editor at, at the Nerds of Color blog. Um, and it, through a long series of events, I ultimately came across your work through, um, you know, Black Panther and, and the run that you, that you were part of. Um, but before we get into any of the work that you've done and the work that you are doing now, how has the year been for you? I try and ask my guests that because, I mean, we're trying to put last year behind us, but it keeps just hanging around. Um, how's it been for you? It actually, you know, it, it, it hasn't been that terrible. I, um, you know, there, there have been social things I've missed out on, but, um, you know, my, my daughter who recently went off to college, she, she was home uh, for, for one of those semesters and it was nice to, you know, spend more time with her. Um, you know, so like having the family around is great. I think um, it's probably, you know, and, and one of the things I thought a lot throughout the pandemic that is that if this had happened when I was younger or when I was single and living alone, it would have been, you know, absolutely miserable. But, you know, like a, a lot of people my age, uh, you know, a significant part of my social life is my family. So, um, you know, so it, uh, you know, in some ways it, it definitely was difficult and challenging and it's hard to see um, a lot of really moronic people in this country making moronic choices. But, um, you know, just as for me as an individual, I don't think I've psychologically suffered uh, as much as, you know, a lot of people in different circumstances. So I've been very lucky. How about you? Uh, same. Thank you. Thank you for asking. I do feel really fortunate. You know, my, my family's in good health. My folks are, are vaccinated. My wife and I are, are you know, doing what we can to um, <laughs> to keep ourselves from from going stir crazy. So thankfully, you know, we go outside or we just like shoot the breeze. But um, like you said, nothing, nothing's happened to me or my, or my family. And so I feel fortunate. I don't feel that I have anything to complain about. Maybe I just um, feel a little uh, uh, lazy. I don't feel as productive, but those are, are really um, in- insignificant compared to like the big picture. But oh yeah, th- yeah. Thankfully, I, I feel good. Uh, um, I'm, I'm positive about the way things are going for some parts of the country. But like you said, you know, um, they're problematic people doing problematic things. Yeah, for um, sure. As um, as as a writer, what what's it like though writing during the pandemic? I imagine it's not too different from just writing outside of the pandemic. You know, you still have your alone time. You've got your um, office space and and just your downtime. Um, has it been a different space to navigate, especially creatively? I wish I had the sort of mental fortitude to sit there and say, I'm going to knock this stuff out. But I find that I'm getting a little more distracted um, lately. <laughs> I no, I actually I, I've been very fortunate. I've always um, I've always written on a schedule. I um, I'm a morning person. Uh, some people might might think obscenely so. I, I usually get up between four and five and start work right away. So I tend to do the bulk of my major creative work before a lot of the household is even awake. Um, and that you know that routine has helped. Um, you know, I've, 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 I've gone stir crazy in other ways, but I've definitely kept, uh, kept to my writing routine and, uh, you know, whatever, whatever challenges I've had in the past year uh, have not been, I don't think, because of, of the pandemic. I think it's just, you know, the ups and downs of, of the industry. And, and the, the, you know, the industry has drastically changed. I mean, and I, I'm talking as more of just an outsider, um, how the industry has changed in many other industries because of COVID. Um, and so initially I, I had reached out to you because after, uh, you know, nearly a decade, I came in contact with, um, the, you know, the most dangerous man alive and, and the man without fear, both amazing black Panther runs and, um, you know, some of your other work, the mystery men. And I, I'm surprised that it took me so long to get here, but I think again, it's because of, uh, being in this space of just sitting here and being able to go through as much content as I can go through because I have time to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I'm, I'm finding such incredible work. And, and I wanted to ask, how does it feel to be a part of this, um, this cultural movement, considering how popular Black Panther is, you know, you still have your, you've staked your claim in it and you've contributed um, immensely and in such a, a gorgeous fashion with your runs. Um, what does it feel like to just, to just see, to just see that everywhere now? I mean, Black Panther's uh, um, popularity has, has grown immensely the last five years, let alone the last 10 yeah, I mean, as you as you can probably imagine, I'm I'm thrilled that Black Panther has become a uh, much more high profile character. I when I was when I was doing my run, and you know, I would say, oh, you know, I've got a, a monthly series at Marvel, and people would ask me what character, you know, and other than like serious comic nerds, most uh, most people had no idea who Black Panther was, had never had never heard of the character. Um, who hadn't yet broken through to the mainstream? My my run, you know, when we um, when we took over the Dare, Daredevil numbering, that was clearly just you know another of Marvel's efforts to see if they could uh, draw more readers to uh, Black Panther. So you know, obviously, uh, film has a um, a bit of a bit more of a reach than uh, than, than comics, and um, you know, I, I've. I I was a Black Panther fan before I I took over the run. I I kind of got drawn in by the Christopher Priest uh, era, which you know was just such an such an interesting and in many ways just like completely bizarre uh, uh, take on the character, um, but fascinating. And he was he was such an interesting writer and had such an interesting perspective. Um, so I was thrilled to be working on Black Panther. I'd also always been a big uh, Daredevil fan. So the opportunity kind of to do Black Panther with a Daredevil vibe was really appealing to me. Uh, and I and I loved working on that book and I loved the character and I definitely got to know the character better as a result of, of, of writing him versus just being a reader. And um, you know, so seeing the the success that the the film had, and and seeing it become an international phenomenon was 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 really amazing. And of course, it's uh, just terrible and tragic about Chadwick Boseman and uh, and the you know the future of T'Challa as a character in the MCU is clearly over. And that's uh, I mean that's that's really you know for me that's 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 a real shame because I'd love to have seen what they would have done with the character. And I think, and, and and I agree. And it was, it's still, it's still jarring to think about because of of the the um, the the time that the news broke and uh, everything going on already during 2020, and then to face that kind of realization and um, that oh wow, we won't get to see him, we won't get to see T'Challa on on the big screen, and then you know, folks thinking about potentially recasting in the future, and then having a very sensitive and 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 sometimes difficult conversation about that. Um, but it, it's really interesting too because your your run takes T'Challa into Hell's Kitchen, and it it's so interesting now that most of T'Challa's uh, arc is bringing him back to like Wakanda or to the Wakandan space, at least as of late, especially with the film. Um, and I, I I don't know it, it, it to 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 your point about the um the influence and, and just how much has changed with regard to um to the stardom of, of T'Challa. I really love that run. I thought it was stellar and I thought it was just such a, a brilliant um exploration of T'Challa's um you know abilities to be so so tactful. Um hold on I think I'm getting like Thank you. some spikes here in the video. Am I breaking up for you at all? Uh, a little bit, but not right now. Okay. Um, you know, there's always, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, it's life on Zoom. It is what it is. I know, I know, and and I could I could always edit that and whatnot. But but um, yeah, again, I I appreciated the the heck out of it. It was, it was really stellar. Um, can you talk a little bit about about what you're working on now? Uh, and if at all, <laughs> any of the details you could break down about your your newest work, the uh, peculiarities. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, uh, you know, the peculiarities is a historical fantasy novel that uh, comes out in September, and it is um, it comes out of my you know it's been more or less a lifelong interest of mine in uh, historical magic as it was actually practiced by real people who believed that what they were doing was having some kind of effect in the world. 
Um, so not, you know, Harry Potter type magic with people shooting laser bolts out of their fingers, but just a much more subtle kind of, of magic. And it's, you know, it's also about, um, you know, transformation. The main character at the beginning of the novel we learned is, um, is undergoing a slow metamorphosis into becoming a tree. Um, and so much of the novel is about him trying to to learn this uh, this kind of historical magic as that was um, there was a real uh, revival craze for it at the end of the 19th century, and to see if he can uh, solve these problems. And it deals with you know various social aspects, a lot of uh, class issues, uh, bigotry in Victorian England, um, you know, social mobility. Uh, all kinds of things and and hopefully it's just a lot of fun and weird and kind of grotesque and funny and scary and all the things you want a, a good story to be it it gave me a lot of the uh i mean th- th- this is just coming from like the literature side of things uh john cheever's the swimmer has this really strange um that short story's got a really strange um like magical realism it's surreal but grounded in a little bit of reality and there's these quirks in time that play out through through the short story and the pu- the peculiarities remind me of that that it's a, a little more grounded in in um how much history is involved and has history always been your 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 interest it seems to be at the heart of a, a lot of your work but then you've also got work in the comic book world you got work here you know with fiction but has history always been been your thing I, I like historical fiction. I like writing it. It's a lot of fun. And, and it, it definitely makes up the bulk of, of the novels I've published. Um, but that is in part just a kind of publishing trajectory that I, that I was on because I, uh, I, uh, I entered publishing after turning uh, my um, unfinished doctoral dissertation into a novel. I was in, in graduate school working on 18th century British literature, and I turned my uh, my research into my first book. And, you know, so from there, um, some of the, the demands of the publishing world have kind of dictated what I do. And I've tried to, I tried to go my own way a bunch of times, you know, I have, uh, I have other kinds of novels. And, and as you say, I have other, uh, other kinds of work, I've worked in comics, I work in gaming. Um, so I've had an opportunity to tell a lot of different kinds of stories. And it, and it, it really shines through, especially through all your different work. Um, and it's really rich and, and engaging. So I've, I've appreciated getting to uh, engage with your work now, too. Um, where can where and when can can people get uh, their hands on the peculiarities? It goes on sale September, te- se- September 7th and they can get it, you know, at uh, wherever it is. People buy books these days. Who knows? I haven't left my house in a year. <laughs> It's still for me, for, for my wife and I, it's still Barnes and Noble. And we're just hoping to get to, you know, <laughs> walk around there again soon. Um, David, thank you so much for your time. Oh, sure. Um, my pleasure. Thanks for, for talking to me and, and your kind words about the run. And, uh, and good luck with, uh, with your work.